law of detachment basically tells us if P, then Q, okay, so this is just a way of condensed way of writing it, but basically if the hypothesis happens, then the conclusion will happen. So if P happens, these three dots mean therefore, therefore Q will happen. Now the important thing to remember when you're working with these uh, laws is that they flow in the arrow direction, so the direction of the arrow. So it doesn't go against the arrow, it's like a river, it goes just that one direction, okay? So the law of detachment basically involves two quantities, the hypothesis and the conclusion. If the hypothesis happens, then the conclusion will naturally follow from that. Now the law of syllogism is really like the transitive property. You probably learned the transitive property, like if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C, right? Well, it's very similar here with the law of syllogism. If P, then Q. If Q, then R. If P happens, meaning this first item, then through this chain of events, right, R is gonna occur. Now, sometimes students get a little bit confused, like, is it law of detachment, is it law of syllogism? Well, with law of syllogism, you'll notice that there's three or more quantities involved, whereas law of detachment, there's just two quantities, the hypothesis and the conclusion. But here, what happens with the law of syllogism is that the conclusion ends up becoming the hypothesis in the next statement, which leads to a, another conclusion, and so you have that, like, chain of events. So let me see if I can show you what I mean uh, in some of these examples here. So if you study, then you will get a good grade. Makes sense, right? Now you don't wanna overthink this. Sometimes some of these uh, problems you're gonna be doing in your math class, okay, with the laws of logic, they don't involve uh, numbers or even like a figures or even like um, mathematical concepts. But to try to understand this better, what you wanna do is you wanna underline whatever comes after the if. So if you study, so you studying, that's the hypothesis, whatever comes after the then, I like to underline, that's the conclusion. So this is like our P, and this is like our Q. So if you study, then you'll get a good grade. Let's assume that's true, okay? So John studied, what can you conclude? Well, John studied, that means that John must have gotten a good grade, okay, on his quiz, his test, or in his class, right? Anne got a good grade, what can you conclude? Well, Anne got a good grade, that's actually the conclusion, but we don't know that the fact that she studied, okay, we don't know if that actually is what was the cause of her getting the good grade, okay? She may have not have studied, she might just be a brilliant student, and she just naturally just gets good grades, or maybe some other factor, maybe the teacher said, okay, I'm just gonna give everybody an A, okay? So what you wanna pay attention to is, you don't wanna think about it like, creating all these different scenarios in your head like, oh, well, yeah, it makes sense. You know, you wanna think about, is the hypothesis being triggered? Then the conclusion will naturally follow from that, okay? So if this is a true conditional statement, a true uh, if-then statement, it flows this direction, okay? Not the other way. So here what happened when Anne got a good grade, okay, you cannot conclude that she studied, okay? Even though she may have, but we can't make that conclusion. This is actually what's called the converse error. You're saying it in reverse, okay? And that's not necessarily a true. Let's go on to another example. If you study, then you'll get a good grade. If you get a good grade, then you will go to the next class. Okay, so notice what's happening here. After the if, that's our hypothesis, you study. Whatever's after the then, that's our conclusion. You're gonna get a good grade. But then look what happens. If you get a good grade, okay, so that conclusion becomes the hypothesis in the next statement, okay, then you will go on to the next class, okay? So again, if you wanna diagram this out, I would call this P, this Q, this is Q, because you can see we're repeating that statement, and then it causes R, which is going on to the next class. So just like we diagrammed out here, P causes Q, Q causes R, so through that chain of events, if P happens, it will cause R to occur. Okay, so you're with me so far? So here if we say Sally studied, what can you conclude if Sally studied? Well, if she studied, then she's gonna get a good grade. Because she's getting a good grade, she's gonna go on to the next class, so all you have to state is that, okay, since Sally studied, the conclusion is Sally went on to the next class. Whereas this one here, John went on to the next class. Does that mean that John got a good grade? Does it mean that he studied? 
Those things may or may not be true, but we can't conclusively make that argument. This is an invalid argument, okay? So John went on to the next class, no conclusion. We really don't know, you know, if he studied, if he got a good grade, if any of these other things happen. That's going against, against the direction of these arrows. It's like going from R to Q to Q to P. Only thing we can include for certain, for 100%, is that it's going this direction, okay? The direction of the arrow. Let's look at one last example. If you're enjoying these videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Check out some of my past videos. I've got more videos like this coming for you. I wanna help you in your math class. I want you to get good grades and um, you know, make it less stressful for you. That's my goal behind all these videos. Um, so go ahead and um, you know, like this video. Um, more importantly, subscribe. But let's look at one more example so I can help you to understand the law of syllogism and the law of detachment. So here, the last one. If you get up late, you will miss the bus. Okay, so let's just say Mario misses the bus. Does that mean that I got up late? No, right, because we're going in reverse. That's the converse error. But if I get up late, so say like uh, Bob got up late, well, can you conclude? Bob missed the bus. So assuming that this is true, you don't wanna start getting into this um, idea of like trying to like logic and reason it out in your mind saying, well, you know, maybe, maybe John was able to, you know, make up some time by, you know, he's not brushing his teeth that day and, you know, then running to the bus stop and catching the bus. No, you just have to take it at face value. You have to say, okay, whatever comes after the if, getting up late, what does that cause getting up late? Well, then you're going to miss the bus. So we're just going to say miss the bus. So that's the only thing you can really conclude. Assuming this is true, the hypothesis will cause a conclusion, but not the other way around. That's the law of detachment. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.